In our last video, we talked about dot notation, how we could create a chain of objects, such as Algonquin dot classroom dot students dot Vince. This was a chain of objects that we had. Every step we got further and further down the chain, we were narrowing our focus. So inside the Algonquin object, we had the classroom object. Inside the students object, or inside the classroom object, we had the students object. Inside the students object, we had the Vince object. We talked about properties that we could add to the end after any one of these objects. So at the end of this chain, I could talk about the fact that Vince had pants. We set our pants property to true. Now properties, that's this first thing, that is only one of the things that objects can have. Objects can also have methods. So if I were to use the same chain, algonquin.classroom.students.vince, the Vince object has the property pants, but may also have other objects inside of it, or methods. Methods are things that objects can do. So let's say this Vince object has a right arm object, and that right arm object can be raised up. In JavaScript, we would write that this way. Right arm dot raise. And after the raise, we have the two round parentheses, these round brackets. That's a visual cue that this is a method. It's something the right arm object can do. We could talk about some other ones here. Other examples. Algonquin, classroom, students, dot Vince going down to that same object again. Let's say the Vince object has a method. The Vince object can speak. Sometimes a method will require extra information. In the case of speak, what is it that Vince is going to say? Vince is going to say, help. So, help, right here, this is a property being passed to the method speak. So the Vince object can do this thing. It can speak. And in order to speak, it needs this extra little piece of information. The Vince object also has another object inside of it, the right arm object, and it can be raised. This is something it can do. So that's our second thing. We've got properties, we've got methods. Properties are things you can quantify and measure. Methods are things that you can do. And our third thing is events. These are things that can happen to an object. So I'm going to use the example here, Algonquin, Classroom, Students, Vince. Now let's say there's an event called Pass. Vince can pass his course. The pass is the event. It's the thing that's happening to Vince. Now, in itself, if we just wrote this line like this, it's not really going to be doing anything. We're going to look at later on how these events are actually going to trigger other actions. So events can trigger methods. So methods are the things that happen. So Algonquin, Classroom, Students, Vince, Vince is going to call his speak method and he's going to celebrate because he has passed. So the pass event is going to trigger the Vince object to call its speak method. This is properties, methods, and events. So all of the objects that we're going to be dealing with in our programming through JavaScript, remember that these all, object, all these objects potentially have properties, methods, and events. The way you tell the difference between them, methods have these round parentheses at the end, properties, you're usually setting a value for them, and events, they look like properties, but you're not putting a value into them.